Next segment, one of my favorites. Oh, we yeah. kind of started already at the top with the damn okay, with yeah. the way you talked about some of the lineage there. Right. But now he can do the football portion of it. <laughs> Shaquille Barrett, okay. Yeah. For the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's the first guy we got to hit. Damn. I'm okay. Damn. I'm okay. Yeah, no, I mean, yes. I'm okay. The legal gambling. Oh, baby. I am Chris Sims. I'm okay. Damn. <laughs> okay. Somebody had a good time with that. Oh, I feel like it's like a, uh, there was like an Eminem song that I feel like used to listen to that. Uh, I can't remember what it is, but you we got to do Eminem, it. huh? Uh, of course. Yeah. yeah, always, always. I still listen to a lot of hip hop music, but uh, to start our damn okay segment, we are going to hit with number 58 down in Tampa Bay, Shaquille Barrett, okay? Yes. A guy who's been backing up Von Miller uh, and Bradley Chubb last year in the De with the Denver Broncos has popped over the last few years when he was in Denver, but never got that role in the starting lineup, then had to deal with some injuries. But four sacks the last two weeks, okay? He's got seven for the season. He's leading the NFL. And – Disrupt it. I'm not, and, when, and listen, I'm not all about sacks. Like, oh, gosh, you're getting sacks. You're amazing. His sacks are real sacks, though. They're not like, oh, and Dominican Sue, you know, busted through, and then the quarterback had a run, and he ran into Shaquille Barrett. Right. And he, that's how he got – no, they're a legitimate, like, him beating left tackles, him strip sacking people, him beating people with spin moves. It has been extremely impressive. And they weren't garbage sacks. This no, against, they against were not. No, they, they were in the meat times. potatoes, yeah. important times of yep. the game. And he gave Nate Solder a lesson in, you know, welcome to Tampa Bay, and I'm legit out here on the end edge. They're not missing uh, JPP down in Tampa because of this. This guy right here, he's made us forget all about him. Tied with Mark Gastineau for most all time through three games. Gastineau did it all the way back in 1984. Yeah, Mark Gastineau. I, get, uh, I still believe he is uh, dad. Would We asked him this on Wednesday. Yeah. The hardest hit dad ever took, I believe, is still Mark Gastineau in a preseason game. Really? And I believe in it was 84. Game. I think he could still pop his chest from the hit. He could pop his chest for like 30 years after. How do you pop your chest? He, you can, he would like go like this and you could hear it just pop. Like yeah. what? He would it, like spread it out and I don't know how so to say it. Something separates in something, there? Like, something oh does something. I don't know. But either way. He should, uh, he should drive up and present it. And, yes, with his shirt off. <laughs> I would like to see that too. Uh, all right, but Shaquille Barrett, damn, okay, mm -hmm. you're a player, damn, okay, you're about to get more than that one year, $4 million contract, damn, okay, you're about to be rich. And the Broncos still looking for their first sack. What? That is yeah. even the more amazing right? story with it. You're right. Thank you for adding that. That's a good tidbit. I have no problem with the Broncos, but that's just a good exclamation. Yes, point. bam. On, on the end of that one. Let's stay defense. Yeah. Stay in the NFC. What do you got for the next one? Well, the Green Bay Packers, the Smith brothers, the brothers from another mother. I mean, holy crap. I, I just, first off, the way they dominated the football game again yesterday, but have dominated the first three games of the year to just, damn, okay. This was worth the free agent money we gave this, these yes. two in the offseason. Big change for right? that organization. Green Bay apparently never does that. Idea yeah, sometimes. oh, apparently getting good players from other teams <laughs> helps your team out, so they say. But they've changed the look of the football team. They've changed the style of the football team. Paul, it was evident to me just being on the field in pregame against the Bears week one, along with a number of other NBC people who were like, well, they make that defense look different. They're giant human beings on the edge of a defensive line. But they're just such a physical presence, not only in the run game, but the way they can collapse the pocket in the pass game. They are game changers right now. And for a Green Bay offense that's not lighting up the scoreboard offensively, well, this is one of the reasons they don't have to right now. They can play D. They can cover. They got good zone packages. They can play man-to-man. -man, and they can beat your ass up front. And right. the two Smith brothers on the edge are a force to be reckoned with. I think it's a big reason why, and you mentioned that the, they're not lighting it up offensively yeah. yet. How many times in the last 10 years, uh, the majority of the time, after a game, win or loss, Aaron Rodgers is up there. A little bit prickly. Yeah, right. You know, hey, starting quarterbacks with the high standard are. Yep. See how relaxed and happy he was yesterday? It's, it's the I, least amount got, of pressure he's ever had ever. Because of that defense. Yeah, yeah. defense, run game. They're dangerous. I, I mean, the Green Bay, okay? And I, I, but I don't think we got Green Bay coming up again, so I'm going to hit it here. Is Green Bay, I would say watch out for Green Bay. You know, they're, they're finding their way. They're still kind of like, this is week three. They're 3-0, and 
and they're kind of still formulating the way they want to play. Right. You know, they're finding their way, which is scary because, you know, they're going to find the right things they want to do you in the past finding game. the way offensively. Yeah, offensively. Yeah. Sorry, their defense has been found. They're, right. they're good. But, yeah, offensively, they're still tinkering with how they want to attack teams. But you see little more plays every week where you go, ooh, I saw Aaron Rodgers throw some balls on rhythm yesterday right. where I went, hey, he took five steps and threw it because coach – so showed him some plays yeah. last week and said, you got to do it. And it was either after week one or week two. When we yeah, were week two. Last week said, we were talking about he's it. He's a little bit conservative. He should cut it loose a little more. Definitely, so. yeah. And I, I think he, he probably acknowledged that when he watched the film from that Vikings game last week. But Green Bay, uh, just like Minnesota, I say watch out for in that NFC North. Let's go to the AFC. Yeah. Offense, Jacoby Brissett. D -d 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 Damn, okay. I expected him to be... Okay. I didn't know if he was going to show up on damn okay. Yeah, well, because he's been damn okay. He's been damn than just okay. I mean, yesterday he was phenomenal. Uh, first off, starting the game on fire. What was it, the first 16 passes of the day complete? Yeah. Um, you know, game-changing throws. You know, just everything he does. Pinpoint accuracy on the intermediate to deep throws down the football field. You know, the fearlessness in the pocket. You know, the first two weeks – did a lot of good things, certainly, um, but also had a few plays here and there where you went, okay, you're still finding your way as a starting mm -hmm. quarterback. And I also think they were managing him a little bit the first two weeks to where they were like, okay, he's not Andrew Luck. Let's not expect him to drop back 45 times and throw for 400 yards and four touchdowns. So let's play a little different style. But I think last week when they saw Atlanta come into town and they said, damn, Atlanta's got eight people at the line of scrimmage every play. Uh, we got to just take we got to take off the training wheels. Yeah, we got to start attacking and he came out on fire and um, I just been so impressed with him. The Colts, one of those two and one teams. Yeah, they're not in the elite class like we talked about with the Chiefs or the Patriots, but they're in that next group down who's again like the Packers. We just kind of find in their way how they want to win football games. Yeah, dangerous. Like, very dangerous. And kind of flying under the radar. Really I under the radar. So it's kind of a collegiate yeah. thing, but maybe this is happening in the NFL as well. Andrew Luck retires, and people aren't feeling sorry for the Colts, but they're not afraid of them either. No. Because that's the one thing that made you afraid to play Indianapolis. He's gone, and now people are seeing that. I don't know if I want to say, and you, you can correct me, that yeah. the offense hasn't missed a beat, but they're right. still really good. They're still really good. Yeah, I, th I would say the only beat they've missed is maybe just some of the deep – explosive plays Andrew Luck makes that way and that's only because of like his experience mm -hmm. and knowledge and his knowledge of the offense and he got to play so much where I think Jacoby Brissett's just starting to get in his wheelhouse there to go like oh wait you know this coverage we usually look at this but coach did tell me the last few weeks on alert on this coverage to look at my post route it's not normally a part of my read Andrew Luck was phenomenal at stuff like that like where he would go it's not really within the normal read of my offensive play here but coach did give me an alert for this one coverage, and I see it, and my alert is up, and the, the sirens are going. And I think Jacoby Brissett is getting to that. And um, that's where, that's where you know, they're going to be dangerous because we know they're going to be able to run the ball and control the line of scrimmage with that old line. Is there anything else you see that's missing from, from, from Luck to Brissett? Well, I think the only other thing maybe, uh, the scrambling as far as just tucking to run, he's not as good. You know, the first two weeks if I had a complaint, maybe stayed in the pocket too long. You know, you know, he's a big sucker, so he yeah. breaks a lot of tackles that could extend plays, but he also takes some sacks because he just stands in there forever. And he, and he, I would say over the, the first two weeks, and I didn't watch the film of yesterday's game, but just on TV, he didn't get stuck on the first read as much. I do think in the Chargers game, the Tennessee Titans game, there was there's moments because he's, he trusts himself and his arms so much where, oh, the guy's a 20-yard out. Oh, he's going to come open. Oh, he's about to come open. Oh, but well, you're getting hit. you got to move on at some point. You can't wait all day for that stuff. But uh, really impressed with, with that. And, you know, one thing that jumps out to me again, that Atlanta defense. It's over for Atlanta. They lost Ken O'Neal. All right? Atlanta's not going to the playoffs. I'm saying mm -hmm. that right now. Okay? Wow, it's awfully yeah, early. I'm, I'm saying it. It's just the same old – recklessness on, you know, offense. There's plays here and there. I can't believe Matt Ryan again threw a dumb interception in the red zone. And really the biggest thing to me is, you know, defense, hustle and team speed only goes so far. And when you're going to line up in the same defense all game, every game, I mean, you're just seeing quarterbacks are so comfortable when they get to go out to the line of scrimmage and they go, oh, it's the Falcons. Oh, it's the Seattle scheme. Oh, it's the ninth play in a row. 
There's just there's nothing to make the quarterback think or or pull the ball down or go, ooh, I don't know what this is there. And, you know, he hit a number of plays, I think, that, that shredded that coverage yesterday. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.